Boop. Gotcha. Salutation. My name is Maria. This is Love Party Paint. And today, 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 we are going to be doing a really cool painting for Halloween. It's I uh, bet you're wondering, what is this scary, scary, scary painting we're doing? Well, it's not really that scary. Today's painting, we are going to be doing a glitching moon phase painting. It's going to be so awesome. It's inspired by Halloween, because what is better than a full moon or just a spooky, scary night? This whole month, I'm going to be doing Halloween-inspired tutorials. Grab your paint. Grab your paintbrushes. And meet me back at the canvas and meet me back at the canvas you want to do more of my Halloween inspired tutorials and hang out with me please subscribe to my channel and if you have any ideas for Halloween inspired paintings comment them below here like down there like it's down there and you comment and you say I would like you to do a bet tutorial in the comment but if you think this video is awesome I would really appreciate two thumbs up well you can't get two maybe just one and that would be super spectacular it would be so spooky spectacular <laughs> follow me on my Instagram too at love party paint I also have a Facebook page um, you can uh, see what videos are coming up I usually post them in my stories about what paintings I'm working on. So you can be the first to know. I mean, who wouldn't want to be the first to know? And I feel like being spooky, damn it. Let's just be doing a voiceover for this one, so stick with me. It's gonna be a short one, too. The supplies you'll be needing for a glitched moon face painting are black acrylic paint in either fluid or heavy bodied or even craft paint, white acrylic paint of any shade. It doesn't really matter. I like the black paint to be uh, darker in tone, so I usually use a carbon black. The brushes you will be needing are um, one small flat brush, more like a half inch size, uh, a large mop brush or a filbert brush, one boar hair bristle brush of any size as long as the bristles are pretty long because that's what we're going to be making our stars with, a small half inch mop brush or filbert, a liner brush or a small detail brush, you can even use a small round brush, a sea sponge or a kitchen sponge, that's what we'll be making um, our moon with, and also some something round to uh, trace to make your circle or your moon. You will need a pencil and or chalk. Uh, also, obviously, you're gonna need paper or canvas in any size. Uh, also, you might want a ruler handy, some water, and some paper towels. To be able to follow this tutorial, it also helps to have the reference photo handy. Um, you can go ahead and head over to my Facebook page at uh, Love Party Paint. Um, or my Instagram page. Uh, it's better to use my Facebook page. I will have the image that I photoshopped of the glitched moon phases. Um, you can go ahead and save that or just do a screenshot and then um, print that out so you can follow along with me. Okay, now it's time to start our painting. Let's start by taking your bowl and placing it in the center of your canvas. You're going to take your pencil and trace all the way around your bowl. Now move your bowl about one fourth inch over at the same level at the center point of the first circle that you did and trace around the bowl again, making a circle. Now move the bowl over to the other side of the moon about one fourth inch over from the center point and trace around the bowl again. What we are trying to make is something that looks like a glitch aesthetic. What it should look like after you're done tracing it is three different circles and it kind of looks like you have um, blurred vision or you're seeing double. Now we're going to be working on our half moons. Next, take your bowl on the left or the right side of your full moon and where the first circle of your full moon is, this is where you want your two moons to meet up. Now, starting at the top of the full moon, measure with uh, your ruler or your pencil. And you want it to be about six inches over from the center point of the top of the full moon. So put your um, bowl at that point and start from start by tracing from the top of the bowl all the way around to the bottom of the bowl and you're going to be working it towards the full moon so the two um, round parts of the moon meet together. Now we um, are going to start painting our canvas so grab your flat brush and your black paint 
And what you're going to do is you're going to start by tracing along the outside of your moons with the black paint. Um, so you're gonna just paint along the outside of that. Next, you are going to cover the entire canvas in black paint and you're gonna start at the top of your canvas working your way down. Don't cover your moons, <laughs> leave those white. And you are gonna move from side to side. So you want your strokes to be from side to side and you're gonna work from top to bottom and cover the entire thing in black. Okay, so what we're gonna need to do now is we're going to make a mid-tone gray color. You're gonna take two parts of your white paint and mix it with one part of your black paint to make the sort of mid-tone gray color that you see that I'm using here. Um, with your small mop brush or your filbert brush, you are going to go to the last part of your half moon and you are going to start um, painting and see sort of motion towards the inside of the last part of your half moon and you're gonna move towards the outside of your canvas um, blending towards the black. So you kind of want to fade it out or kind of like a gradient. Now you are going to move to the first part of your half moon and you're going to fill that in with that same gray color um, and you're going to do this on both sides on both parts of the half moon. So you're going to repeat the same process twice. Um, after you do this you're going to want to clean up your edges with your flat brush and your black paint. So just go ahead and trace um, over where your uh, over where your half moon shape is along the outside of it. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to be taking um, a light gray and our medium tone gray and making a gradient from the outside of where the moons are towards the edge of the canvas. And so how you're going to do this is you're going to take um, your small mop brush or your filbert and you're going to mix a light gray color. And how you're going to do this is you're going to take three parts white paint and one part black paint um, and mix those together to make a light gray. Um, all this really means, if you don't like the measurement thing, um, all this really means is that you should have more, way more white paint than black to make a super light, um, not super light, but a light gray color. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to start by painting along the edge of your moon. You can do this with your flat brush if you want, but I think the mop brush or the filbert brush works just fine. So you're going to want to go along the outside of your moon with your light gray paint. And now what you're going to do is you're going to take your light gray paint and you're going to blend towards the outside um, of your canvas. And once you get to about the midpoint, you're going to want to kind of stop with the light gray and you're going to want to dip into that medium gray uh, paint that you had and you're going to start by kind of blending those two together and you're going to work it out towards the edge and sort of blend it into the black. Um, so, so it's going to have that gradient effect. Um, so if you're having trouble with this, like I was, what you can do is you can take your um, large filbert or your mop brush, make sure it is dry. Um, and lightly blend over where the two colors meet and also go along the outside of the, um, the edge of where the dark gray is to kind of fade it with that dry mop brush or filbert. And you can work with, like use a super light hand, don't shove that paintbrush in there. Use really light circular motions to get these two to um, blend together. And you're going to repeat this process until you get your desired look. Uh, I had to go back and forth with the paint and I actually had to go back in with my black paint and sort of um, help blend all of those things together. Anyway, so that's how I did that. Okay, next is the funnest part to me. We are gonna take our white paint and mix in a few drops of water so you get kind of sort of a runny consistency or what you're doing is you're thinning out your paint. You want it pretty thin, almost like the consistency of milk. And you're gonna take your four hair brush, brush and you are going to just dip the tip of the brush into the, the liquid paint or the fluidy paint. And so how you're gonna hold your brush is you're going to point the bristles pointed upwards towards the ceiling and you want to hold the brush with your hand close to the bristles and you're going to take your pointer finger and you're going to pull back on the bristles with your pointer finger and you're going to flick the bristles back and you want the, the paintbrush facing towards the canvas obviously so you don't get paint everywhere and you're going to flick the paint onto the canvas you don't want to hold it too close otherwise you're going to get splatters you want to hold it probably about two to four inches away from the canvas while you're doing this so you're going to flick stars all over the canvas and you can put as many as you want. You, just, you can go crazy if you want. And it's okay if you get some that kind of go all wonky because that will just look like flying stars and it'll look beautiful. You can also take your um, liner brush or your detail brush or your small uh, round brush and dot on a few larger stars uh, just to um, make it really pop. So now what I did is I painted on a few um, stars by hand, bigger stars. And how I did this is I dipped into my white paint with my liner brush. You can also use a small detail brush. And what you're going to do is you're going to make a cross pattern and you can put them all over, you know, just do a few all over the place. And it's gonna make your painting look extra blingy and extra twinkly. <laughs> and if you want them to look like extra shiny and have some extra sparkle, um, you could do the cross and then in the center of the cross, do a tiny X. And that will really um, give some extra sparkle and pizzazz to your painting. And I did a few like all over mine. 
Okay, so what you're going to want to do next, if you lost a lot of the lines of your moon, you are going to want to take your bowl and your paint or some chalk, whatever you prefer, um, and retrace the moons like we did in the first part with the paint itself. Um, the reason I did this is because if you don't have the lines of the moon, well, it's just not going to look like um, glitched out moons. It's just going to look like three moon phases. So um, it's really important to keep those um, lines really sharp and in there if you lost them. Okay, so now we are finally going to fill in our moon. Taking your sea sponge or your kitchen sponge, you are going to dab into the dark gray that you mixed and you are going to lightly dab or like stamp in the center. Um, keeping most of the, the color in the center is what I'm trying to say. Um, so you don't want a bunch of dark towards the outside of your moon because it's going to create the illusion that the moon is a sphere if you have most of your light color around the outside of your circle. So it won't look like a flat circle. Um, and now what you want to do is you want to take your sponge and dip into your light gray paint and kind of go all over the moon um, with the light gray paint. So now we are going to be filling in our half moons. You are going to take your sea sponge and dip into the light gray paint and you are going to dab this all over each section of your half moons. Now what you're going to want to do um, to create that shadow and create um, the illusion that it's, you know, like spherical, if that's a word, you're going to dip into your dark gray paint with your um, sponge and you're going to dab it on the inside of the half moon. So what I mean by that is the, it's the part that's facing the outside of the canvas, but it's the inside of the moon. Like if the moon was a bowl, it'd be the inside of the bowl. So you want to take the dark paint and go along the inside of that. And you kind of want to have those two colors sort of blend together. Okay, so what you're going to want to do next, if you lost a lot of the lines of your moon um, and retrace the moons like we did in the first part with the paint itself. Um, the reason I did this is because if you don't have the lines of the moon, well, it's just not going to look like um, glitched out moons. It's just going to look like three moon phases. So um, it's really important to keep those um, lines really sharp and in there if you lost them. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take our small mop brush or a filbert brush and we are gonna take that um, light um, and medium gray paint and we are going to clean up the edges uh, just in case some of the sponge got on the outside of the moons. And um, you're gonna wanna blend those colors together. And where the, t the half moons sort of meet uh, at the top, you are going to take that gray paint with your mop brush so at the tip and at the bottom where it kind of looks like a banana you're going to want to actually separate those with the gray paint so you're pretty much painting out the tip of the moons and this is really going to help with that sort of like hazy um glitchy look that you're going for okay so now what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take your liner brush and your dark gray paint you can even just use straight black paint but i do recommend using the gray so it blends better and you are going to outline the edges of the half moons um so what you're going to do is you're going to take your your dark gray paint and on the inside of the moon shape remember how i said if it was like a bowl you'd you'd be tracing the inside of the bowl do you get what i'm saying so you're going to take your gray paint and you're only going to trace along that part of the moon so what you're doing is you're creating definition and um, separation between the moons so you're going to do this on each part of the moon on each like third of the moon so you know how you have like three lines by this point you're going to do each of the inside of those lines um, so I guess actually it's only two. So you're gonna do both sides of those um, half moons. And also you can take your white paint and um, kind of clean up the edges. Uh, and so you're gonna take the white paint and you're gonna do the outside edge of the moon and you're gonna to wanna to blend that towards the dark gray. Um, so what this is gonna do is it's gonna help just create that glitched effect even more. Um, you just want a seamless look with the colors. You don't wanna completely cover up what you did with the sponge, but you don't want it to look too separate with the um, the edging that you did with that dark gray paint. Um, so you're gonna do that to both sides. Okay, so what I also decided to do is I didn't really like the look of the light color around the outside of the moon. So I took um, my liner brush and my dark gray paint and I outlined the um, I outlined the full moon, especially um, towards the bottom. 
because um, I wanted to create some shadowing at the bottom so it looked more like a sphere instead of a flat circle. And I really think this helped with the um, effect of the moon looking um, really round. Now you're going to take your white paint and your liner brush or your detail brush, re-outline your moons with that white paint. Um, it's just really important to keep those lines for that glitch effect. Also, I lost a lot of my stars in that process. Um, so what I would recommend is after you do that, go back into your white paint with your um, with your board hair bristle brush and fling some more stars on there. Don't get too many onto your moon because, I mean, it's gonna look too messy then. Um, but that is pretty much how I got this glitched moon painting. Hopefully this was easy for you to follow. If you have any questions, don't be afraid to leave them in the comments down below. Um, I'd love to be able to help you through this painting. And also, if you did complete this painting, please share it with me on my Facebook page or um, share it with me somehow on my social media. I have Twitter. I don't use it very much. And I also have my Instagram, which I use all the time. So you can DM me there. Um, if you have any questions or just in the comments, go ahead and, um, and just uh, ask me any question you need about the painting. Oh yeah, and if you share this on Instagram or any of your social medias, please um, tag me in it. I'd love to see what you guys came up with. All right, bye. Our final painting. I hope you had fun painting this with me today. And next week we'll be painting another Halloween inspired painting. So if you have any ideas, you can leave them down below. And don't forget to subscribe and like this video, share it with all your friends, and adios amigos. Toodaloo. Happy Halloween. Goodbye. Farewell. Alvita Zang. Isn't this picture so cool? Anyway, that's our glitching moon faces, and happy Halloween!